Welcome back to another high yield video question bank in my series where I train you to develop patterns of high yield test taking so that you can dominate your USMLE and Comlex. Here's today's question. A 24 year old female presents to the emergency department complaining of vague and generalized lower abdominal pain. Workup ultimately reveals a cystic ovarian neoplasm. A hematoxylin and eosin stain of the neoplasm is shown below. Which of the following blood tests should be ordered? A. Thyroid stimulating hormone. B. Cortisol. C. Fasting blood glucose. D. Calcium. Or E. Sodium. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this question. The correct answer choice to this question is choice A. Thyroid stimulating hormone. And the reason that this is the correct answer is that this is an ovarian teratoma and this is a presentation known as struma ovarii. So struma ovarii is a variant of an ovarian teratoma where you have the presence of thyroid tissue in the teratoma. Now recall that a teratoma is made up of various types of tissue. And so in this instance, if the type of tissue or one of the types of tissue contained therein is thyroid tissue, then this is called struma ovarii. So the presentation on your exam, as this vignette shows you, is going to start with lower abdominal pain and the generalized vague symptoms of an ovarian neoplasm. And then the question will pivot. They'll either do what I did and show you a histological slide of thyroid tissue, or they will describe the full-blown symptoms of fulminant hyperthyroidism. And then you'll have to piece together the fact that A, I've got symptoms that suggest there's an ovarian neoplasm, plus B, these symptoms of hyperthyroidism. And then they'll ask you what lab should you order or what is the diagnosis, et cetera, et cetera. So recall that when you see thyroid tissue, you want to be able to identify the colloid, the follicles, and the surrounding cells. So this is just a brief refresher for your histology class that you've probably blocked and erased from your memory, but this is going to be important on USMLE and Comlex. Additionally, in these types of questions where you're dealing with perineoplastic syndromes, recall that this table, again, just a brief refresher here, is going to be your highest yield findings of your perineoplastic symptoms. So you see a lot of lung cancers here. We've got small cell lung cancer, and squamous cell carcinoma, which of course can be in the lung as well as elsewhere, but we also see the thymoma, the teratoma, and gastric adenocarcinoma. You want to be able to associate the potential perineoplastic associations with the laboratory abnormalities and the presentations. For example, in small cell lung cancer, if you have the ectopic production of ACTH, you could see something that resembles a Cushing syndrome. And this is really important because on your exam, if they start to describe, for example, lung cancer, right, unintentional weight loss, hemoptysis, wheezing, cough, and then they pair that with the constellation of symptoms of Cushing syndrome, your brain has to connect respiratory pathology with endocrine pathology and recognize, oh, I'm dealing with a perineoplastic lung cancer. So there are two seemingly different topics that get merged together on USMLE and Comlex. So just like I did that with an ovarian neoplasm plus the hyperthyroid and the thyroid histology, you have to be able to do that with various different malignancies. So this is really, really high yield. Coming back to our question though, if the answer was going to be B, D, or E, you would associate these labs with perineoplastic findings of lung cancer. So we've got small cell lung cancers as we kind of just talked about for cortisol. And then for sodium, you also can get SIADH in some of those perineoplastic findings. So sodium levels would be measured in small cell lung cancers. Calcium in squamous cell carcinoma and fasting blood glucose, you know, I guess technically in a Cushing syndrome, you could be measuring that, but that's not really a specific answer. So the purpose of this question was one, make sure that you remember histology because it is important, especially when they're talking about cancers. And then B, know the third order associations between your cancers and the other seemingly non-related topics because perineoplastic syndromes on your exam are very, very high yield. Good luck.